I V M. Hey everybody, we'd like to welcome a new sponsor, Storytel. Storytel is an audiobook streaming services for mobile and tablets. If you haven't heard audiobooks before and you're a podcast listener, audiobooks are probably right up your alley. You can enjoy your favorite titles when you travel, exercise, or cook. There are great books over here like the Percy Jackson series is available if you want like some new fantasy or if you want to go for something old school or classic. You can get either Bram Stoker's Dracula or you could get Edgar Rice Burroughs' John Carter series. Download Storytel today from the Apple Play Store and enjoy a free 14-day trial. That's Storytel, S-T-O-R-Y-T-E-L. Storytel from the App Store or Play Store. Download today. You're listening to TFG Football. Hello and welcome to another episode of TFG Indian Football Podcast in a new weekly avatar and uh, we are back in interesting times. Uh, the ISL semi-finals are in full swing, the I-League has just wrapped up and we are gearing up for this mega fixture that's coming up uh, later this month which is uh, India visiting Kyrgyzstan in the AFC Asian Cup qualifiers. So I've got uh, Nikhil and Nikhil is actually back after a very long time and of course Kevin is there. Uh, we are... Uh, saying a heartfelt goodbye to Siju who has uh, moved on to pursue other opportunities but it's good to see Nikhil you are back after a very long time why man yes yes uh, there are a lot of things happening on the personal front so I was not able to keep track on what's happening in Indian football so and it was better for me to you know Pass on the garden to you guys. Like, handle I'm actually. So, uh, on that note, but yeah, whenever the need is required, I'm always here. Yeah, I'm are actually. We, are we going yeah. to talk about Mumbai FC today? Yeah, we should be. <laughs> 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 no, no, I think I think Mumbai FC is history. Uh, we should move on from there. Well, you should take a uh, cue from Siju probably because she just uh, seems like she's become a Bengaluru FC fan full time right now. Uh, she used to support uh, Mumbai FC. Any any kind of switch, Nikhil? No, 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 not yet, not yet. Until and unless there is a club who gives chance to Mumbai players, who gives you know priority to Mumbai players, I don't think I'll be supporting any club. Mm, uh, how about Mumbai City FC? They're not doing that. Um, so if I if I look at the squad of Mumbai City, I think there is Kunal Savant. I think there is Raju Gaikwad. I hardly remember Raju Gaikwad playing for any of the Mumbai teams. Mm. Uh, Kunal Savan played for Mumbai, but other than that, there are not many Mumbai players. So, also, you know, the club has to also think about the, uh, how to uplift a community or a society in terms of, you know, creating academies and all. So, there is Mumbai city is a mark. So, I'll be like, if, if they start doing all this, I mean, Mumbai city is my club. Mm, uh, Pune City, of course, has uh, quite a lot of uh, Maharashtra-born uh, players uh, in the ISL squad, especially in the second division squad, Keen Lewis being the most prominent. And uh, their the academies are also quite uh, frequently recruiting local players right now. So maybe, uh, you know, both these clubs uh, will put together, uh, a, you know, a more uh, bright future for Maharashtra football going forward. But that's for another day. Right now, Pune... What, yeah. Oja, since you since you uh, spoke on this, uh, Mumbai does not have a team in I League. I don't know whether it is next year or not. It does. It also doesn't have a team in second division. You know that actually speaks like I mean this is this is catastrophic that Mumbai doesn't have a team. This is I'll tell you why this is happening because of the uncertainty in the roadmap for Indian football. Everybody just wants to sit out uh, for a few years uh, just to see out the storm because nobody knows. Like, what what happens to you if you win the second division league? Do you get to play in the I-League or is there an I-League next season? Nobody knows anything about, uh, you know, what what's there in the future. And in the meantime, if you're playing with an uncertain future, you're just burning cash and nothing is coming out of it. Uh, it was only some crazy people like uh, Fateh Hyderabad and Mohammed and Sporting who are completely, uh, you know, committed will do it and Kinkare will just... Uh, focus on local football right now so so that's how yeah. it's gonna go uh, Kevin you uh, frequently connect with the local football scene uh, as a coach uh, and uh, as having quite a few fr- uh, friends around there uh, do you see a similar kind of despair because suddenly the Mumbai clubs are disappearing from the national scene yeah again uh, no, uh, it, it's all coming down to you know, the, the roadmap of Indian football if that is not clear but that there's no way somebody would want to invest and and that's clearly understandable because you know you, you don't put team for 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 a year 
for two years. It has to be at least five years. And then, you know, the, the things that have been favoring ISL so far, now we've seen ISL reserve side playing in the second division. And you know there is a trend that is being shifted from you know, the traditional clubs to the franchise-based clubs because they want to dig their, uh, their roots deeper. Now, second division is where something... So it, it gives you a platform for recruiting players from various mm-hmm. uh, sites, not just you know your local. It uh, does pick up players from other leagues as well. So in that scenario, you don't have you know I League being given. I League, you know, you know after a, after a couple of years, we won't even get to hear the name, and, and that is one of the primary reasons that teams which have been you know vying for that top spot in the I League. Uh, you know, the second division is, is like a hollow ground right now. Uh, if, if you want to take a big leap, you have to take that small you know, testing waters in the, in the second division and then move on to the uh, the top spot. But here, you see a big bridge between you know, the top division of Indian football. Obviously, that itself is not clear. And if, if, if that is not clear, you won't expect somebody to you know, take that small step uh, via the second division. That's the reason everybody is playing the waiting game. And probably when things are more clear, uh, we will see more investment coming in in the second division from you know, traditional clubs rather than uh, the ISL franchises. Yeah, I mean, you can't actually, uh, I mean, when you go down to the grassroots level, you can't uh, imagine Mumbai football without Kankara FC. And it's it's really sad to see them go the Mumbai FC way right now. Uh, Nikhil, though, uh, you know, uh, we have seen Maharashtra clubs, uh, as in the ISL teams, uh, make a lot of gain. I mean, uh, lots of new fan groups are springing up around Mumbai City and uh, Pune City. Uh, and and much of it was uh, fueled by the fact that uh, Pune City had their best season yet. They went into the semifinals yeah. with high hopes. But disappointment. Why did that go down that way? Uh, you're talking about Pune City? Yeah, yeah. You know, I feel I feel it was the first time Pune City went into the semi-finals, and uh, it was a great season for them. I mean, I know the loss would be, you know, uh, must have taken the fans aback, but it's it's all in all positive. I mean, even even if you, I think Pune City uh, won most number of away games, is, am, am I right in that? I think uh, they're pretty much up there. From. Yeah, yeah, and and they got the momentum from there. You know, that, that actually speaks about the team and the kind of, you know, Indian players that stood out amongst all those foreigners. Adil Khan, uh, Vishal Kes, uh, Gurtej, you know, these guys have actually actually given, you know, a good bench strength to what, you know, Indian national team can be in future. We'll talk about the Indian national team later. But, you know, these kind of uh, not-so-known players who are coming out of, you know, either uh, I-League or ISL clubs, uh, it's, it's a good point in football thing. Kevin, uh, you watch, watched the match. Uh, did it seem like Pune City were suddenly out of uh, water when they were taking on Bengaluru FC? I mean, this is their best uh, this squad yet. Uh, the performance speaks for that. But the, the just the balance of the squad seemed to be so off when you're comparing them to Bengaluru FC, right? Uh, it, 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 you know, they didn't play when they really had to. Uh, if somehow I have to put my thoughts through, uh, you know, somewhere down the line, I thought uh, Pune City is one team that has the capability to uh, do well against Bengaluru. I, I won't say they, w- they would go all out and beat them, but they were the ones who could come, come closest. And and right when they needed to step up, I think that was not the, not the day. And uh, it, it really completely you know devastated uh, by that uh, J3 J3's first goal and. And the second one, obviously, you know, it showed that it's all over. And it didn't really uh, go into the second half. Uh, the game was when it's uh, just about the second half, uh, uh, the start of the second half. Uh, yeah, they did uh, did not turn up, as we would, uh, you know, elaborate on that. But for me, uh, Pune City, uh, the journey from, from you know, being the club, uh, being that team which is never qualified for the playoffs, this was the best season, and and it couldn't have been better if they had just got uh, you know uh, had their thing going. But I, I think it, it is that day, that moment that they did not have uh, by themselves. Else, uh, we would have seen Bengaluru AFC may, may, might not have um, made it to the final. Only if uh, Pune City had kept the composure, I think it didn't really, uh, didn't really 
uh, have it in them that pressure situation when you have uh, a club which is you know uh, as as old as the league in, uh, themselves uh, coming and stepping up and uh, especially the the away leg uh, for for bengaluru i think uh, that is where it, it made a difference nil nil was a great result only if uh, pune city had got one goal from the first leg i think it would have been much different uh, in, in this last leg i think that's what uh, was their game plan you know i i can i can put a point over here that you know we all knew that bengaluru fc had an upper hand you know going into you know at at uh, home uh, playing against pune city we all know that it's going to be difficult for pune city and i think on the 80th minute uh, jonathan luka scored 80th or 82nd minute after that it was you know totally against the run of play pune city wanted to score the score was 2-1 at that point in time and pune wanted to score a goal that's why the whole defense line was up you know they just wanted and you saw the goal scored by chetri you know on the 90th minute it was it was completely against the run of play so i guess it was full marks to pune city as well it was not as bad of a season but uh, at at home against bengaluru it was always one of the difficult Yeah, actually, the score line sort of uh, belies uh, the hard fight that Pune City put up because early on, if you remember, within the first five minutes, there was this a uh, very tough save that Gurpri had to pull off, and uh, then you had uh, some back-to-back attacks from Pune City, and Alfaro got this brilliant chance uh, from a cross that he had to put in, and he he had it. Gurpri was beaten. He just sent it like out by uh, uh, half a foot or uh, one foot, and. if that goal had gone in the entire match plays out in a very different way right uh, and of course uh, you have uh, pune uh, you know bengaluru fc with with the trifecta of udanta miku and uh, sunil chetri i mean sunil chetri scored three goals but udanta with that cross set up the first one uh, you know it was a, a great pass from midfield which uh, set chetri up which got them the penalty for the se- uh, second one uh, it it was it was a collective performance from bengaluru fc who were good on the counter who were very steady in the midfield who initial the the storm that pune city put in because they knew that uh, the away goal counts if they get an early goal bengaluru fc will go very much into the back foot so it's it was it was the the plan was there the possibility was there just a couple of bad finishes and the game plays are differently here i want to get a uh, kevin in i want to uh, pick his brain on one thing you are playing probably the most important game in the club's history uh, second leg of your very first semi finals appearance and everything is up for grabs and your coach gets suspended like how does that affect the way you approach the game progressively as it evolves on the spot If, if it had to make a difference, it would have made a difference uh, in in the campaign because this was not the first time that uh, Popovich was suspended. I, I think they they got used to it, and even the league is uh, probably be, uh, being a bit unfair to Pune City. Uh, they had to do without the coach at least two times prior to the to the, to the semi final, and uh, yeah, obviously it does make a difference. Uh, you have that figure. Everybody looks up to the touchline whenever you need some inspiration, and you see the. Uh, Franco Popovich there, you know, screaming with his lungs out, yeah, yelling out instructions. And when you miss that on the touch line, you know there is something amiss. And uh, it, it, you know, some way I, I, I would say, you know, uh, it, it was not Pune City's best days, you know, of, uh, from, from the nature. I would say, you know, that, that, uh, it, it, it all comes down to everything works in your favor or no. And at the end of the touch line, you have your coach absent. so it, it all you know it, it is you know a series of uh, not so good things going against them and again the 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 on field performance was no way close to being not so good but uh, I, i think they they played everything that they could uh, that goal by luka that free kick i think that says it all that the quality behind that beating good free getting the ball over the over the wall and you know that that's unbelievable the beating good free and uh, there was there was one uh, save in between uh, he took a, uh, the, the shot to the place deflection and uh, gurpreet just stretched out his left hand to make that save i think these were the moments where you know we could have seen uh, the game would have been tied at uh, two all and that could have been the difference but just wasn't pune's uh, pune's day yeah a two all uh, at at kantirava means uh, actually pune city go through to the final 
so that's how close it was kevin not having a, a coach at the sideline and especially when uh, your initial i mean you could see that the initial attack spurt that came from uh, pune city that was predecided by the coach and everybody that okay we're going to have to get an early goal and somehow uh, you know take the edge off and uh, get the advantage when that doesn't work out and uh, bengaluru fc play the way they do and uh, you know sunil chetri gets an early goal that's when you have to readjust your strategy by what's happening on the field and that's when the coach's presence comes in handy because if he's there he can read the game and make the necessary changes at that point you don't have the coach like does that does that yeah. kill your uh, possibility in a game which which is still uh, you know uh, technically it's still winnable does that kill okay. your possibilities right there yeah no the, there are good teams that you know have a fixed strategy uh, you know the way to approach the game from from the game from the minute one and there are best teams who can change according to the opponent's tactics and uh, formations and that is what was missing for pune city you know, they didn't have that edge over somebody you know, dynamically changing uh, uh the you know it, it was kind of a reply giving being given to the uh, uh, bengaluru fc defense and had uh, popovic been there i think we'd have seen a slightly more tactical approach by them because all they needed was one goal at that time you know even one all would have been a, a good result and that was good enough for them to see it to to see pune city to the final you know that this it is you know you know feel bad for them you know had it been uh, Uh, and all strength even for the coach being on the sideline uh, they would have been a much much stronger side than uh, what they were yeah but, but there's one point there's one point i need to make for pune city i know we are speaking more about pune city than bengaluru fc but you know i have been traveling to pune as a part of a uh, as a part of mumbai fc fan uh, uh, during maharashtra derby let it be pune fc let it be dsk but you know we used to always say balewadi is anti wadi <laughs> but you should have i mean like this year's isl balewadi was completely packed i mean they had i don't know what they have done but people are coming to the stadium they are watching the matches and balewadi is looking beautiful for pune city mm. have you guys noticed this Yeah, at the uh, actually there are a couple of new fan groups that you notice uh, online, uh, and uh, the spectatorship has gone up. I'm pretty sure, uh, and maybe this is this is a very strange uh, phenomenon. Uh, if you're looking at most ISL teams, some are losing steam. Right, NUFC, ATK yeah. completely decimated. Kerala Blasters, the the fa- craziness is still there, but uh, you know numbers are dropping partly due to the uh, the the reduction in stadium yeah, capacity and yeah, yeah, but but I think there is one game where fifteen thousand people showed up. Right, so yeah, there, there's an ebb here and there that you can see. Pune City is actually benefiting from the opposite, like longer season, uh, you know, a more drawn out process. and and slowly they are making their uh, you know making pune their home finally which is a great uh, sign uh, yeah we were dwelling too much on uh, pune city probably because uh, you know their isl campaign is over we will get to talk about uh, bengaluru fc uh, next week when we come back uh, with with uh, our analysis on the isl final so there is another a uh, semi final that took place uh, the first leg of uh, the fc goa versus uh, chennai fc semi final uh, that's uh, underway the first leg was held at margao and uh, it was a 1-1 game uh, which is which we predicted actually uh, we uh, you know the show we did before the semi finals we said the first leg is going to be the two teams feeling themselves out and uh, that's what happened in both semi finals a draw uh, chennai city have that away goal advantage i don't really know if that's going to come to much because somebody is going to score you you have you have two good attacking sides like fc goa and chennai fc somebody is going to uh, draw blood you know it never happens that they're going to play out a goal this draw so kevin what did you think of uh, this match up uh, it was it was it seemed like uh, fc goa had uh, more of the ball uh, they they were taking some good shots uh, chennai fc just snuck in that goal towards the end uh, it, it's about you know staying in the alive in the match and uh, chennai chennai fc just managed to do that uh, the gameplay was dictated by fc go no doubt uh, they, they dominated gameplay uh, by keeping possession and uh, their short uh, passes really you know, makes you feel that it any time that they were about to score and mandar rao they said i think he was phenomenal uh, just the way on the left flank he used his uh, you know his speed his, his agility 
I think he was brilliant there. Uh, he, uh, the Chennai defense had tough time dealing with him, and so was Narayan Das. I think he also had a great game uh, uh, in the first leg. Uh, but you know, one goal from FC Goa, uh, you have to you know question them. Uh, you know, what do you do with all the possession in the world if you're not able to uh, you know, convert that into into goals? Uh, for for a moment, I thought you know Karanjit. Uh, uh, did not have his best game. Uh, uh, even for Katimani, I think uh, the way he conceded uh, the equaliser, you have to question, you know, what what uh, what was going wrong with with the defence because there was uh, way too many uh, too many uh, chances given away in front of the goal line. Uh, I, I think there was a goal line save made as well. So that really, you know, uh, asked you uh, of what are you intending to do from this first leg? Goa did want to get maximum. And uh, Chennai, I thought, and I think they played smart. Uh, they just wanted to see off the game with you know, not being, uh, not not conceding too many goals. And I think they just did that. And just like the Bengaluru, just like the first semi-final game between uh, FC Pune City and Bengaluru, this will go down to that one goal which was not scored. I think uh, here Chennai and FC are in a better position because when they play at home, uh, I think uh, they, they are much more, you know. Uh, Aware of the space uh, behind the, behind the goal defense, and uh, it, it's easy for them to understand who who is the ones uh, who are the players to be marked. And uh, Lanzarote uh, was given the space. Uh, Coro, I think somehow he didn't was denied the space. Uh, so that's the reason we saw more of Mandar and uh, Narayan Das. So this mm-hmm. might continue in the second uh, second leg as well. But uh, for me, it's advantage Chennai and FC for getting that one goal uh, away from home. Uh, that's the reason I feel uh, the second leg will belong to Chennai and FC. Yeah, they're going in with that advantage. Uh, and uh, But one thing I don't understand is because why are they taking such uh, hugely different approaches to home and away? Because it's not like in ISL you see a, a, a very different atmosphere or conditions when you're playing an away match. It's not like, you know, you're going to play in Manipur or uh, Shillong or Aizol where the conditions, uh, altitude, uh, the the pitches, everything is very different. Right, but uh, here here it's... The the pitches are standardized. Uh, the atmosphere is not that very different, uh, unless you're going to like Kantirawa, which is intimidating, or Kerala Blasters home games, which which are uh, really uh, you know partisan in a way. I don't think it's very abusive, but it's partisan. Other other than that, the the games uh, for a player to experience are more or less similar. So, does it make sense that uh, John Gregory would want to just uh, be a little bit more defensive uh, in the away leg, or was it about this is this being the first leg and he's not completely sure of himself? Yeah, I don't think he was defensive anyway. It was you know uh, if you just look at JJ, he was not at his best, and when you see JJ, you know, not firing the shots on target, you know it's not his day. Because for, for JJ Lalpeklua to be in that hot form, you know that he can strike the ball from any angle, from any distance. And that was missing in this first leg. So that's the reason, you know, you saw uh, him being subbed off in, in the second half. And that's you know, quite understandable uh, from, from John correctly that day. Uh, if you're not being able to score goals, at least not concede. So that way, he wasn't defensive. He was just trying to contain the damage. You know, and FC go you if you allow them that space, you know they can be dangerous, and that was the only thing that was uh, running John Gregory. And I, I think uh, uh, the defense uh, was quite okay uh, because you know one or two slip ups were there. Coro uh, uh, and uh, Lanzarote you know, almost uh, made the most of it, but to some extent I think uh, this was more. Uh, trying not to concede that again uh, very potential. Absolutely. And also another thing that was remarkable is how Mohammad Rafi and Anirudh Thapa came on to replace two of the big names in the national team, uh, JJ Lalpeklua and uh, Balwan Singh. Uh, and, you know, this is a, this is a season, uh, both in ISL and I-League has been a season for the emerging players, uh, uh, in, emerging Indian players. You have uh, Abhijit Sarkar, a player in the Indian Arrows, who played well for the Indian Under-17 national team and came into the I-League and became the highest Indian scorer. Uh, and l- names we have never even heard before. Uh, who are making it, uh, you know, making an impact in the I League, and you have uh, also this situation uh, where some of the junior players, junior Indian players uh, in the ISL teams, outperform their senior counterparts 
on their day and same thing happened with chennai nfc those substitutes saved the game for chennai nfc in a, in a game which they were otherwise dominated in so that's a very interesting dynamic to look at and we will be looking at it uh, in more detail as we wrap up uh, our seasonal discussions and we review the team's performances uh, at the end of the season so let's take a sh- short break here on the other side uh, some controversy some jubilation and some excitement around the indian national team that's been picked I mean, not the national team. It's the it's the squad that's there for the preparatory camp, and out of that, there will be uh, uh, the national team is going to be picked for the Kyrgyzstan game. So we will discuss that. Is Constantine getting it right or wrong on the other side? Hi, I'm Amit Verma, the host of the weekly podcast, The Seen and the Unseen. In my show, I examine the seen effects and the unintended consequences of public policy and private action. I show how policy is meant to help the poor. often end up hurting the poor i show her good intentions can lead to bad outcomes i have had guests like jay prakash narayan shruti rajgopalan alex tabarok shikha dalmia and vivek call on this show and we've covered subjects from politics economics foreign policy to even parenting catch the show every monday on the ivm podcast app or any other podcasting app that you prefer or visit seenunseen.in for all the latest updates Okay we're back and let's turn attention to Kyrgyzstan which is the team we're going to play in a so called dead rubber match but I think I think and you can uh, you, know, you know just just call me whatever on that this is probably one of the most important matches that Indian national team has played in a long time because our national team games have been tainted tainted by the ranking game that India played for a uh, for a year or so which ultimately did not work out we're still not going to make it to the pot 2 in the Asian Cup but uh, you know we we played calculated opponents we played uh, uh, you know opponents which would give us most leverage and we didn't really go out there and test ourselves and of course we always had the uh, benevolent presence of uh, the likes of eugenson the likes of uh, sunil chetri uh, carrying us through you know he carried us through in the kyrgyzstan home game he carried us through myanmar away uh, got us the win against cambodia all those games were delivered by the senior players and guess what india is going to play in kyrgyzstan away from home in a in a, in a completely different climate in central asia where uh, it's still about 2 3 degrees goes down uh, to that low uh, every day it's mountainous and we don't have sunil who is out by suspension and we don't have uh, eugene sun lingdo uh, who's got an injury uh, so the the one two of the best uh, attacking forces are going to be absent and this is going to be one of the most uh, difficult challenges that indian national team has faced in a long time so when constantine goes you know, before, up and before we start discussing oh yeah before yes. we start discussing on this game uh, are you going to visit kyrgyzstan uh yeah i am Uh, I wonder why you asked. How? D- yeah, I, I, uh, I got the visa. I got the tickets. Uh, I have to buy some dollars, which need to be converted into soms and all that stuff. So yeah, I'm excited. I'm also packing, and I'm. I have to actually in 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 the middle of March. I have to buy uh, some hot clothes and everything. So all that is good. I'm. Uh, I tried to learn some Russian on Duolingo. I realized it's not going to work in two weeks. So I gave up. Uh, I'm. I'm just like uh, spasiba and all that stuff. I'll. I'll uh, be making. king do with so yes we will bring out some great coverage from uh, the location uh, as, when the match happens but it's not the only reason i'm excited about uh, i'm excited for the other reasons uh, that i also uh, mentioned and how the indian national team will look like when you don't have some of the best players available so uh, constantine goes out and picks like 32 probable so we'll be uh, doing a camp in mumbai and the team will be picked from that and a lot of people were not very happy with it because you don't have a rahul beke yeah you don't have uh, some of the players who have been making uh, a lot of uh, you know turning a lot of heads in isl and i league suse raj for example who everybody thought would get into the national team because we don't some have some of the best attacking players available it it didn't turn out that way sumit pasi is still there alan devery gets a look in hitesh sharma is in hitesh sharma i have no complaints about but but does it look like this is how the uh, you know best 32 in indian football should look like nikhil completely you know i, I was completely surprised by a few of the names that are mentioned over here and i think on twitter i i found one of the fan groups who did a a poll kind of a thing are you happy with the selection of this 32 and 80% you know out of somewhat around 400 voters said that no they are not happy because 
you know, there are some names who has to justify their position in terms of, I mean, I don't know, either Constantine has to justify why he has picked Sumit Pati because uh, I think he was a part of North East United. Yeah. He didn't really yeah. play much. Yeah. I think two and or three appearances. Yeah. I, I, I doubt he played any of the games. So, on what basis has he been picked? Whereas we have seen the likes of Usaira, Jahul Beki, who has time and again proved, you know, as a as a strong contender to be in the national team. And they have they have played immensely. They have actually leaded the side, you know, the club that they have uh, played for. So, uh, yeah, there there are a lot of doubts. I don't know, maybe, is, is Constantine overestimating or being overconfident about this? I know it's a dead rubber, but is he just trying to... Um, uh, take take youngsters over there and try to uh, make them play. But then again, why not Rahul Beke? Why not Sussairaj? The question is still there. Yeah, exactly. Uh, one thing I want to point out is that Pasi sounds closest to Messi in Indian football of all the players that we have. Maybe that's one of the reasons. <laughs> but uh, jokes aside, I think one of the reasons why Sumit Pasi keeps getting picked is because of his uh, height and the, and the ability to control aerial balls because... Of course, Kyrgyzstan, taller players. But then, but then, no, no, no. But then, I think this year, uh, Sumit was a part of North East United. Last year, he was on a loan to BSP Shivajian. Before that, he was with Jamshedpur. How many goals has he scored through the head? Uh, yeah, probably. So, so, on what basis? Kevin? I don't know. Uh, this, this is not the, the squad that we want to see fighting Kyrgyz Republic, whom we, lo- whom we won... Closely, but it was a narrow win, and we all know how difficult we we were, you know, being put under pressure, even being play, played at home. And just get this is an away game. This is not the squad that we want to take after such a long break. And that that is the worst thing that can happen to the Indian team is we are not playing any friendly before we are going there. And yeah, that, thanks that to Super Cup. Be, yeah, <laughs> and, and you know that, that's a worrying sign for. For the Indian team because they've not been playing together for a long time, and even with this squad uh, that, that's coming together, uh, one month you know a few weeks of camp is not going to be you know uh, get, getting us to the best of strength. So what what should have been done is you know the players who who've been part of the camp and uh, you know uh, were you no know, Sumit Pasi has not not been in the squad. He has been part of a camp, but he has never been picked into the squad for a long long time. So it really doesn't make sense to uh, to have him in the squad, uh, to have him in the camp when he's again not going to be picked. So that that's you know that's completely illogical. I, I do understand Constantine's logic of having you know, bringing back players who were part of the camp for a long time and just to uh, have them in contention, uh, just to be you know talking about taking care of the, the old players who were still going through the injury phase. Uh, so. Kyrgyz Republic is going to be a tough game, and I think this is our best preparation for uh, over six months uh, that we are getting, you know, some game time. Uh, you now, when you don't have Sunil Chetri, you do require some leaders on the pitch, and who are they going to be uh, out of this squad? I can hardly see any leaders. Uh, the new additions, uh, Gurpreet. Gurpreet could yeah, be the Gurpreet captain, Gurpreet actually. Yeah. yeah. But we don't really yeah, have yeah. that attacking leader figure back here. You know, uh, sometimes uh, it was uh, Eugenson who used to uh, lead from the midfield. Sometimes it was Sunil. Uh, now we might see, like, if, if he starts with two forwards, maybe it's going to be JJ and Balwant, uh, obvious choices. Uh, or maybe even Manveer comes in at some point. But seriously, like, like who who is our bad guy? Or who's who's the guy you look up to in at front? I just I just don't see that. I and mean, that is the question that, you know, we have been asking, like, who is next after Sunil Chetri? Do yeah. we have any answer for that? No, we don't. <laughs> yeah, I mean... Uh, but then I think we have to we have to do a makeshift thing. Like, JJ has actually proved himself to be a, you know, that, that striker uh, that India needs. But uh, other than that, then there are these old names like Balwan Singh. Yeah, JJ absolutely is having his worst season till now and uh, Balwan Singh has sort of made a comeback into the national team but we have not really seen him perform against some difficult side like uh, Kyrgyzstan. I mean, got goals against uh, the the in the in the in the Tri Nation Cup. He got goals against, uh, then then scored against Macau. 
we need we need to see more from uh, balwant singh to uh, believe that he is a viable option for the uh, asian cup and that should uh, spur him, spur him on uh, rather than discourage him so i wanted to talk about a couple of uh, picks in the uh, in the team that sort of uh, interests me kevin lobo remember kevin lobo when uh, just before the season started we had him on the podcast exclusive interview uh, he was looking for a team he was spurred in the isl draft now he's back in the national team playing for east bengal like for for a couple of seasons he just sort of faded away now suddenly he has a uh, has a good season after uh, you know dealing with his injuries and uh, finally being fit yeah i mean constantine maybe he was actually watching matches <laughs> lots of people were complaining that he's not watching uh, i league or isl matches it turns out constantine was actually paying attention no yeah now kevin lobo he was with east bengal and one of the uh, no a uh, good point about him was uh, he was stuck in and uh, also uh, he was handling the hair captain jam band that really shows the importance of uh, uh, him being in east bengal so probably you know in that regard uh, when you have an important player uh, leading in the in, in in the central midfield uh, he he's not the quickest of players we do know kevin lobo you know he's got a different uh, game altogether and this could be uh, one of the reason that uh, he has him in the squad because uh, you said lindo is absent now uh, we we saw you know lindo being paired up with uh, gorgeous you know that, that partnership was kind of working for india now uh, when when uh, lindo is not there probably kevin lobo takes his place but who's going to partner with uh, him is the question and you no know, uh, when you have a, a, a technically superior and a, and a physically strong side like kyrgyz republic you also require those kind of kind of uh, fit players you know strong in your upper body strength probably kevin lobo fits in there you know that that's what my thinking is from uh, if i have to think that way if uh, you want a replacement for lindo Yeah I think uh, I mean I'm just thinking about what you said about Kevin Lobo's partner Anirudh Thapa maybe or uh, Dhanpal just a little bit back maybe he just plays a little bit of an uh, advanced role uh, it, the the whole thing is quite unclear Dhanpal Ganesh is a defensive midfield right? Yeah but you can play him a little bit of an advanced role we've seen him just move a little bit up uh, and uh, contribute to the attack uh, for uh, Chennai City uh you know during uh, his uh, spell over there so yeah it's i think the whole thing is not that clear and it's still not clear in even in constantine's mind which is what he's been uh, why he's been invis- insisting on the camp he wants to see how things play out and then take a call in uh, in the uh, how the team is going to look like how the formation is going to look like one thing i'm actually a little bit excited about is seeing jackie chen singh and satya singh singh together Are we are we going to get that old winger? Royal yeah, Royal Wing though. Yeah. The whole old uh, nostalgic <laughs> duo that that took yeah. Indian football yeah. by storm and ISL came and tore them apart. So uh, <laughs> since then uh, Santosh Kashyap was handling Royal Wing. <laughs> yeah. Imagine glory days. So yeah, it, but Udanta Singh is out there. Do you think Jackie Chan and Satya Singh get to partner on the field? and somehow udanta udanta does you know make his play sure uh, because he, he is uh, crucial on that right wing and uh, we do, we did see him being played you know, uh, a little bit in uh, of an advanced role as well so he he, he definitely keeps his place so there's, there's no doubt uh, that you know, there will be some fight between uh, uh, set to say uh, to you know, win that uh, first level place but udanta singh i think he's a replacement there Mm, all right uh, let's just take a quick look at the defense uh, jerry gets in sarthak gets in uh, salam ranjan singh is there uh, who missed out i i the defense looks pretty okay no arnab mondal ah uh, come on <laughs> he's he's been losing his shit he's been losing his shit I had his worst season in 10 years okay it's it's yeah, just yeah. something is not right he didn't uh, uh, fit in well with uh, khalid jamil uh, maybe it's, it's because he was not given the same importance as before but you know east bengal ended up, ended up with a, a team uh, full of non bengalis like they didn't have any bengali players starting and that became one of the contentions with the fans they were protesting that so yeah this is this is what happens i mean a lot of but, but, you yeah. know arnab you know arnab has been a part of national team for such a long time that i'm actually surprised that he is not here uh, you know in the list but it, it's not uh, right happening right now i think it's been a couple of camps that we've seen him 
not not being uh, picked up and even though he's mm. part of the camp he's not being picked in the squad so that's not surprising in a way but for me you know i will look back at the time when uh, one year back uh, when azol were in contention for winning uh, for winning the i league and uh, when the, the the squad when the probable show of the uh, national camp were announced so there was a question about uh, jay sarani being not included and uh, none of the azol players you know most of the azol players were uh, not uh, given that uh, important and mm-hmm. same goes for minerva punjab this season now, how many players from minerva punjab we see in the squad and yeah. you know i was talking about defense i was just thinking about abhishek ambedkar i think he had mm-hmm. a great season and he, he is great down that right right uh, right back position uh, the right full back and you no know, it could have been possible to see some minerva players uh, the champions obviously uh, it, it's surprising that none of them impressed uh, so to to be even called in the camp Yeah uh, of course uh, well Constantine is I think he just puts too much emphasis on the physical side uh, same th- same thing reason why so many uh, you know uh, good northeastern players uh, sometimes get overlooked Brandon uh, and others who just appear to be uh, you know small in size and uh, it, it, i think especially the european managers they just assume they're not going to work at a higher level uh, against taller opponents who will just just bully them out of the game basically uh, is, is there is there a chance of this changing or or you know this is actually a, a thing that works and uh, it's going to be the norm you know we we've uh, reached a, a formula that you know this set of players a core team has been able to do the job and you know it, it's been the camp now uh, we've gotten through to the uh, to the 2019 afc asian cup now what different we're going to see is obviously you know more faster players more tactically uh, gifted squads now is this same strategy going to be working against that team is you know it is questionable uh, it's work for the camp it's work for the group stages but i don't think you know it's the same uh we we should be uh, applying the strategy because uh, i see the need for more you know speedy players more uh, you know game play happening from the back but india has not been that side uh, that has been able to build up from the back we've seen mostly the game being made from the midfield and that's where you know we need creative players we need players like brandon you need players like you know uh, the ones who can you know have the control on on uh, and the central midfield and this was the reason uh, we were you know, dominated by kirgiz in the home leg because we were on the defensive all most of the time and we know that we were we were lucky to not being con- uh, that we didn't concede early in the game and you know, it, it's this is this game exactly gives us a, a, a test it's like a mirror you know going forward in the uh, in uh, in the final stages that it's going to be tough for uh, if you're going to play with the same uh, core core team and not bring in some fresh changes which is why i think this game is so important because this gives you a chance if you lose there's no repercussions but uh, you know you have some big players out already so might as well see these new uh, guys and i think that's why this camp and this match is uh, going to be about the new players the nishu kumar lal ruathara uh, the uh, sathak uh you know uh, lalrin jiwala subhashish bose uh, maybe manveer singh it's it's these guys who are going to be uh, at the spotlight which is why it looks like a missed opportunity that in the 32 there uh, there are not these uh, minerva punjab or the other emerging players i think a couple of players from indian arrows could have been given a shot just for the camp you know nobody is telling uh, constantine that you have to have 32 you might might even use 40 you know just just to take a look and uh, start the camp uh, one week early with the others who are not busy with isl at the moment so yeah uh, it is a bit of a missed opportunity uh, but uh, you know we have to go with uh, what we have to go with because uh, constantine takes the decision and he did not lose a single match in 2017 so if a coach is saying i'm undefeated who's who's better than that who's going to speak over him who's going to second guess that coach right So yeah that's our show for now uh, on uh, Friday's TFG tackles we will be previewing uh, all the uh, you know ISL games that are happening and we will uh, build up uh, to the ISL final and also take a look at the super cup games that will be happening this week and uh, on Monday we will be back with another episode of TFG Indian football podcast where we will be dissecting uh, and diagnosing whatever went down in the 
आई एस एल फिनाल एंड स्टार्ट द बिल्ड अप फॉर द इंडिया वर्सेज किर्गिस्तान गेम सो सॉरी किर्गिस्तान वर्सेज इंडिया गेम सो इट्स ग्रेट टू हैव यू विद अस केविन एंड निखिल होप टू हैव यू बैक नेक्स्ट वीक एज वेल प्लीज गाइज एवरीबडी इज लिसनिंग डाउनलोड द आई वी एम पॉडकास्ट एव वेर यू कैन लिसन टू दिस पॉडकास्ट एंड वेरियस अदर्स द बेस्ट पॉडकास्ट इन इंडिया एक्चुअली all in one place uh, you can also listen to this uh, podcast on youtube soundcloud uh, itunes and various other podcasting apps uh, as well as on ivmpodcast.com uh, so uh, if you're listening to this on the youtube channel give us a like share subscribe and do come back next week uh, for more discussion on indian football thank you tfg football is an ivm production and you can also check out their other awesome shows like simplified a show that explains intense topic from around the world and simplifies it for you so that you can up your cooler in front of your friends as you can see we have a podcast listener in his natural habitat billions of years of evolution have led him to this point He's on his way to work and listening to podcasts makes his miserable day better. He will now head to work and use all his knowledge to communicate with other colleagues and possibly future mates. You can find more of his species on ivmpodcasts.com. Your one-stop destination where you can check out all the coolest Indian podcasts. Happy listening.